Are you sick of your band sounding like everyone else? Are your drum recordings suffering from sample replacement? You know, that part where someone other than your drummer is playing the drums on your record? The guy in your band is being replaced by time alignment, sample augmentation, and other digital fuckery. That pretty much erases the musician from the final recording. Well, that's just fucking bullshit! Look, I get it. Recording drums is difficult. It takes years to master. It's far easier to just throw a sample on a half-assed recording than to get it right with limited budget and limited tools. Unfortunately, throwing samples on top of your drums is a surefire way to make them sound just as mediocre as everybody else out there. And unfortunately, it seems to be standard procedure these days. Like seriously, check out all these exciting new releases coming out. Oh, what? Oh, sorry. Must have fell asleep to those amazing copy and pasted kick drums we're hearing on every single fucking record these days. Don't mind me though, keep on doing it. It'll make your music kick ass for sure. Fortunately, there's a new harpoon on deck to slaughter the whale that is sample replacement. It's called, and you guys ready for this? The Multiband Gate. No, seriously. It's not called the Symbol Destroyer or the Bleed Mutilator or the Drums Defuckerer. It's just called the Multiband Gate. Wow, I get very inspired by that. All right, so what's the big deal? Why is Bleed so bad? Why do we need this? These are a few questions I got a week or two ago when I did that video on snare mic placement. Well, check out this clip. Quite simply, Simple Bleed makes your drums sound like shit. We're trying to get a whole bunch of mics to work together. The overheads, the room mics, and the close mics. Those mics being the ones on the kick, snare, and toms. The problem is, when you play the cymbals, those sounds leak into the close mics, limiting you on what choices you can make when you're mixing. If you turn up the snare, you'll wind up turning up the hi-hat. Turn up the toms, and you'll wind up turning up the crashes. And this can lead to an overall unbalanced drum mix. And this is where a lot of aspiring engineers become frustrated, take the easy way out, and wind up replacing everything with samples. Now, while there are other tools on the market to kill cymbal bleed, the multiband gate is unique as it was purpose-built for this task, and it only costs 59 bucks this weekend. Let's check it out on snare. Here's a mix I did a few weeks back that a lot of you were saying the hi-hats were just a little bit too loud. Okay, so we've moved over to the desktop here. I just want to show you guys what's going on here uh, in the mix, and I'll punch the multiband gate in and out. And why the fuck does this say demo? Hey, guys, I thought this was the full version. Anyway, let's check it out. Now listen to that snare drum. We punch this out. because I've got so much processing going on downstream right after it. We got a, a pretty healthy treble boost right at about eight kilohertz and that's just turning up the hi-hat all that much. So what we're doing is we're gating out the three different bands. Now if you check this out, it gives you a visual display here of just how the different bands are being opened up. And you can see the treble band here. It's just a little just open for like maybe 30 milliseconds total. It's got like a six and a half millisecond hold and then another 27, so. Yeah, 33 milliseconds it's open for total. And there's the mid range and the bottom as well. And again, you, we can adjust the frequency of the drum just by using these three different bands. Take that up and take it down. And this really allows me to get the snare just slamming in the mix, be able to EQ it the way exactly how I want it, compress it as hard as I want, and I don't have that hi-hat uh, spilling into the mic. This really cuts it down right where it counts. If we can see we get the crossover at 
almost four kilohertz and everything up above is being severely attenuated, whereas the mid-range and bass are being much more, shall we say, gently gated. And I really love the fact that I can approach this in three different stages as opposed to just one with a normal gate. Seriously cool. So I've got an older track I've pulled up here. This is like a Cam Flurry drum solo we did a bunch of years ago in the old studio. And there's a lot of tom work going on right here. And it's really cool. You can see it's a pretty complex section here. And if we take the multiband gate off, this is what we got. A little bit of bleed from the other toms and most particularly the snare. You know, that's just 421s. I think that's what I recorded with back in the day. They do tend to pick up a lot of the snare hits, which can be cool, but in this case, I think we want to isolate the, the drum a little bit more. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw on the multiband gate, and I'm going to show you guys how I've got the drum tune, I'm going to show you how I found that. So, so what we're doing is we're working with the threshold in conjunction with the key listen function. So this is the track pretty much raw, but we can see where the drum's hitting right in here. We're just going to isolate that, get all that snare noise out of there. So now it'll just open for the drum. We want to work with that threshold as well. Pull that back just a tiny bit. We want the drum, we don't want the kick, we don't want the snare and whatnot. Turn off the key listen, should we have a nice clean signal. In this case, I think I want to hold open the high band just a little bit longer so it doesn't get that uh, chattering effect. Pull the threshold up a bit. Okay, that's much cleaner. And, and again, in, in terms of a mix, we can probably crank that up a little bit louder. And it's going to sound pretty damn good. Okay, that, that was pretty awesome. All right, now this next part is a little bit more difficult to get the isolation. Uh, we've got this amazing clip with Bruno Valverde from Angra playing a drum solo. I'm gonna have a uh, video on mixing this posted later on the week. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so you don't miss that one because I'm gonna make the tracks available and I know you guys are gonna wanna get your hands on these because it's a pretty cool performance. Anyway, so Bruno's got wonderful touch and I don't feel I don't have to do very much to his tracks. In fact, I'm really not gating out the mid-range, maybe just a little bit of bass and the treble ever so slightly. Um, in this case, there's a lot of ghost notes going on. And I wanna hear that. So if I turn this off. I just kinda wanna get that hi-hat under control. Let's solo this up a bit and let's see how much spill we're getting from the hi-hat and the mid-range. Pull that back a little bit. Pull that up a bit. Right about there. So what I want to do is I want to get the mid-range uh, for the ghost notes. I don't want to. I don't want to cut that out. I want to still be able to hear those. And we're just playing with this. Now you can see I've got the the one the other great thing about this plugin is we've got these floor controls that shows just how much of the signal we're we're uh, taking out. Now normally on a metal mix I'd have everything like down flat and whatnot, just try and get everything as clean as possible. Uh, Bruno's one of those rare drummers who's just amazing on the kit and has amazing feel and whatnot, who you don't really have to mess with very much to get sounding good. So in this case, I'm just bringing the bass down a little bit and the treble down about 7 dBs. If we bring that up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave the floor for the mid-range and the treble alone. And I'm just going to bring the treble down a little bit. And just kind of balance this out a little bit. And we'll put it back in the mix. Mm -hmm. 
So that's great. We can still hear the ghosting. We're still getting positional information on the hi-hat from the overheads and the room mics. That's super cool. I like how that's sitting just like that. And in this case, we're only taking the treble down a tiny little bit, just enough to kind of get the hi-hat under control without ruining the ghost notes. We can still hear those in the mid-range. We're still getting that nice treble crack on the hard hits on the snare. And again, this is just something you can play with and set to taste. It's super versatile and it'll let you work with many different styles of drumming. Very cool. The end result is we can EQ and compress the drum mics without limitations and give them a much more polished sound without being constrained by the challenges that a large amount of cymbal bleed presents. And that's the other issue. If you've got a drummer coming into the studio that isn't experienced with the recording, there's a very good chance he's in Neanderthal that still hasn't learned what the word finesse means. Or how to spell it for that matter. These are the guys you would normally spend more time cleaning up than actually recording. Now with the multi-band gate, your job is gonna be a whole lot easier. So head on over to AIX DSP and grab a copy. At $59, it's a freaking steal but that price is for a very limited time. It's also a very small price to pay to save you all kinds of grief during the mixing stage. And to get you started, it comes with my very own preset pack for kick, snare, and toms. They're a great jumping off point. Download it today and together we can start putting the drummer back into rock and metal.